Hey folks, how's it going? New episode. Uh, this episode we're going to put on the accessory case and the sump. We're going to clean up the back end of the engine, uh, do some safe things, show you some of the special fasteners in here. So it's accessory and sump time. Hang on. So here we go. We're going to start with the accessory case first. Well, you kind of have to. But we're going to uh, stuff the accessory case. First thing we're going to do is put the oil pump accessories, or pardon me, parts together. That consists of essentially the housing, two gears, steel gears, and a, um, and a, and a drive shaft, so to speak. Now these parts are all brand new. This is actually a superior oil pump kit. So if you're overhauling an engine, instead of buying the individual piece parts, you can just get a service kit from Superior. It has the two gears, has the shaft, and it has the housing. Uh, the cool thing is, late it's a late model type housing that doesn't have any um, doesn't have any kind of um, AD notes against it or anything like that, so that works out real well that way. Um, kind of neat. The other thing too is everything we're doing is lots of lubrication. So we've got our buildup oil, perlite combing. Um, we've got that set up, and uh, we're assembling all that stuff nice and wet. Now we had some folks say, "Hey, why don't you use some?" Uh, automotive engine assembly lube. Well, I would, and actually I do add that to what I'm already doing on certain things. Um, but most importantly, first things first, I use the manufacturer recommended lubricants for the initial assembly, and then if there's anything extra I put on it, I, I may do that. Most importantly is I will use as a minimum everything that the manufacturer recommends. And if I'm putting something extra as kind of a belt and suspenders, make sure that I want to make sure that there's no kind of abrasion or break in damage, then I'll probably add on to that. Um, here we're putting on the uh, nuts, all of that. Um, that's the drive gear off the back of the crankshaft. And you'll see that's what actually drives the oil pump. So every time we assemble something, we're going to tighten it, check it for, make sure it still operates. Um, we're just doing kind of an initial quick tighten up there, I think. Um, and then uh, we want to make sure that everything still turns, tightens, and all that. Now, I did the low end torque on this one, and what I'm looking for right now is to see if the cotter key, not cotter key, safety wire holes, same thing, the safety wire holes are lined up with the castellations on the nuts. Now, on this particular one, yep, check for twist. Make sure everything's still loose. Um, looking up the final torques and all that. On this particular one, I kind of cut it out. I had to swap the nuts around to a couple different positions because the castellations between the low end torque and the high end torque range per the book wouldn't just quite line up. So you kind of end up kind of playing checkers with it, but moving some of the hardware from one position to another and um, doing that. So that's. That's something that um, we ended up doing there. And it's just something you're going to have to kind of do. That's all. It's not a big deal. It's uh, You'll get used to. On some of the engines that use cotter keys on connecting rods, you may end up doing the same kind of thing. So this is kind of high speed safety wiring. Um, pretty simple. There's really only two places inside the engine that have safety wire on these light combings. The oil pump cover and the crankcase center tie bolts which are uh, um, on the uh, back of the um, or pardon me on the bottom of the uh, accessory case where the sump goes on the bottom of the engine it's hidden you'll never see it but uh, it's again on some of these engines as I tell folks it's it's a holdover from the um, 1950s style of design of engines uh, in a modern engine you would never have these kinds of safety wire inside of an engine Typically, uh, a lot of that's been designed out of those kinds of things. So that's kind of what uh, we're doing there. 
so <clears throat> I'll be uh, safety wiring it. It's a one piece safety wire for the uh, three fasteners. And you'll also see me, um, any cutoffs I have, I walk them over to the trash can, make sure none of that gets into the engine. So that's what I'm doing there. So easy peasy, simple, um, simple safety wire job. Okay, now, so now we're putting in the fuel pump push rod that uh, comes off an eccentric uh, off of one of the idler gears on the uh, back of the engine making sure everything works I'm checking make sure everything is ready to go on this particular deal the um, getting any steel parts make sure they're plenty lubricated so this accessory case is ready to go it's got the oil pump in it the fuel pump rod and the uh, everything else tightened up these are the lower crank case uh edge bolts if as it were if there was no sump on the engine this would be the end of the crankcase so because they're hidden these are uh these are drilled ends on the bolts castellated nuts go on them and then they're safety wired together you'll never see them again until the next time the engine's overhauled or for some reason somebody might remove the sump or something but these are uh, all safety together <clears throat> and what i did there is i just double t double checked the torque for when i did all of my other uh, perimeter bolts and all that so because we'll never see them again I just did a double check kind of belt and suspenders again making sure that I have that all now this is kind of a unique safety wire in our biz in that uh, no real rocket science to it but it's a neutral safety so all of the cotter key or the safety wire holes are all lined up in a straight line it's basically a neutral safety because there's bolts and not studs, the um, you just give it a neutral safety. And for those folks that are getting hung up on safety wiring, just so you understand, the safety wire doesn't hold the engine together. The, the safety wire, the reason for the safety wire is to retain, if that bolt gets loose, if that nut gets loose, it's to retain the hardware. Uh, you've obviously missed or you have lost the mechanical clamping of the joint but it's to keep that from fodding out something else in the engine or the machinery whatever you're working on whether it's a carburetor fuel control turbine whatever so it's not to hold the engine together safety wire is not to hold the engine together so for those of you who are aspiring um, aircraft owners want to do some of your own maintenance and you're very frustrated that your safety wires don't look pretty once you do safety wire about 10,000 times, um, it'll look really pretty. But until then, just make sure you have a good positive safety wire. It might not be the prettiest. And if you're doing something like an oil filter or something like that, you can always cut it off and do it again. Keep practicing. That's how you get better. Um, if you are doing something where you're on the road and you have to do a quick safety wire job or something like that, then fine. Get it home then have a mechanic look at it, uh, make sure it's it's okay. So that's that's the safety wire down there. So those two installations, the oil pump and the bottom of the crankcase are the really the only two internal safety wire things going on in this engine. Um, actually for the, I would say for the rest of the engine, there's really no other safety wire other than some of the accessories that go on the engine you know some of those attaching hardware so now we're putting the crankshaft um, gear on and this is actually a subject of an airworthiness directive the uh, bolt uh, that goes on here uh, if you have sudden stoppage uh, this is something that like coming is very concerned about so um, this has all been um, this has all been uh, inspected and, and all of that non-destructive uh, test and all uh, magnetic particle dimensional everything like that we're putting it on with a new bolt new lock tab and making sure that everything is uh, is good to go now what we're going to do here you'll see me um, tighten it up um, this is actually one of the few times that uh, when you're tightening stuff on the engine you're not it's not flailing around because it's bolted to the crankshaft you're bolting to the crankshaft crankshaft bolted to the floor stand and it's not going to jump around on you so what we're doing is we're uh, we're going to get this tight snug tight and then what I'm going to do is take a uh, take a drift and just make sure that uh, you'll see me do that and make sure that it is in fact seated and we are getting a pure uh, proper 
torque on it. So very important. Um, so that's that's kind of what we're what we're doing there. I'll do kind of an initial torque, uh, and then you might see me uh, tap it here. I think in a little bit. Now I've got a uh, this is the drift, and uh, what I'm doing is just with a leather mallet. I'm just making sure that that gear is bottomed out so that we get a good, accurate torque reading. So then uh, we're gonna torque that. Again, this is a real important one. So we wanna make sure that that torque is uh, where it's supposed to be. Everything's set. And then what I'm doing here is I'm looking at it, trying to figure out exactly the best way to bend the lock tab up. So I'll get a screwdriver, pretty simple on that. Just get a screwdriver and we'll uh, Bring that lock tab up and make sure it's in position and locked down permanently. So this is this is kind of the the whole heart of the engine. So we're really taking some effort to make sure that this is exactly the way it's supposed to be. Next thing we've got are the uh, idler gear pins. Now these are held in with uh, three bolts and one nut on a stud. Um, not really sure what the reason for the one stud is. I've got to uh, maybe talk to some of my combing folks about that. I never did get a history on that exact hardware. It might be the fact of the thickness of the case on the other side. Um, but these are held in with uh, nuts and lock tabs. Used to be safety wire, but uh, they removed the uh, with the addition of the lock tabs. They've eliminated the uh, safety wire in the engine, which is a good thing. The lock tabs, you don't have to buy those separately. Those will be inside your gasket set. So your gasket set will have pretty much every um, O-ring, uh, copper gasket, uh, nitrile type of regular gasket gasket uh, for the entire engine. It'll pretty much have everything you need for the engine when you buy the uh, gasket sets. So that's what we're putting in there. The other thing that's important too is when you're lubricating, I'm lubricating all this hardware, but you want to make sure that, especially if you have a closed cavity type of insulation work, where that bolt goes in, it's not open to the back area of the case. Um, you don't want to fill it with oil because then you can actually hydraulic lock that bolt and you can break things. So most importantly is put enough lubricant in, but don't have it swimming in, uh, swimming in stuff. This is the... Uh, this is the one nut. Then once we, we have the, those uh, bolts torqued, bolts and nuts, what I use to bring the tabs up, I don't start banging on it with a hammer or a screwdriver trying to jam them up. What I'll do is I'll just use a pair of channel locks, just nice and gentle, and kind of roll that tab, get it going. Uh, I'm not grabbing it, I'm not scraping it, I'm just kind of grabbing that tab and just kind of slowly rolling it up, probably about 80%. It's not all the way, it won't get it as uh, close as you'd like, complete. And sometimes you pop off there a little bit, close quarters. But uh, I'll use that just to get the lock tab started, so to speak, or mostly on its way. Here's a, got, got stuff in the way here on this one. But um, yeah, the channel locks are kind of a good lever device, kind of a portable, portable uh, clamp. Works pretty well on some stuff. But I try not to use it for what it was actually designed for, because seems like every time you get a channel lock on something, you're going to tear it up. And then using a hammer and a drift, and we're making sure all of those lock tabs are right up against the bolt head on a good flat. Nothing dodgy, so making sure they're all nice and nice and safe. You can see that one's kind of bright, sitting kind of right in your face, so that's kind of good. Cool. 
So just going around making sure all of those are where they're supposed to be. You can kind of see the top of that safety wire in the center of the se center section there. Um, again, just a straight neutral, what I call a neutral safety. So, and that area is all nice and clean and ready to go. So we're finishing up getting these tabs going. One, two, three, four, everything's looking good. Next up is lots more lubricating oil. Lots of oil. Then we're going to put on the idler gears. Now there's two idler gears. One has an eccentric on it for the fuel pump. Uh, if a fuel pump is installed and then the other does not. The, uh, the thing that kind of got me on this particular engine is I just picked up the two gears. The timing marks on the gear with the eccentric, you can see I'm cleaning and wiping this off, were very, very faint. Um, whereas the timing marks on the non-fuel pump gear were very, very prominent. So I actually want to, at first blush, I looked at those gears and was like, man, these things are, something's messed up. And then once I actually put it under the scope, so to speak, I realized that this thing has, uh, was just a very faintly marked at the factory as far as the fuel pump eccentric timing gear. So what I'm doing now is I'm just making sure everything has, is slobbered with oil uh, because we're going to cover this up forever, so to speak, until the next overhaul. So now we're putting the other idler gear on. Really no, uh, no timing marks on that to worry about. The circle up here is for the tachometer drive shaft. Now, if you have an electronic tachometer, this shaft will still be in your engine. Uh, it just rides there, and then you've got a cap on the back of the engine, but this shaft will be there. Now, if you were Building an engine up specifically knowing you're going into an electronic tachometer, you could probably leave this whole thing off, but uh, this is a normal installation. Now the other thing I'm doing here, um, I've, done, I've started doing this here in the last couple of years, is I take pictures of the timing marks to make sure that I have the timing marks. I've got witnesses of the timing marks. You can see the eccentric gear on the right. It's very faint on that gear, but it is there. But the reason I do that is, uh, Somebody will ask you, did you get the timing marks right? And you'll say, sure. And then they'll say, well, are you sure you got it right? Well, yeah. Then they'll ask you a third time and you'll say, uh, well, yeah, pretty sure. And about the fourth time you're thinking, well, did I or didn't I? So what I do is I take a picture of it and put that in the, in the build-up logs in my record so that I know that if there's any question, boom, it's timed. There's no reason why it shouldn't be working perfect. Now what I'm working on here is what I, I refer to this one on the Lake Cummings as the secret bolt or secret nut. This is a, a castellated nut and washer that goes behind the camshaft gear. The camshaft is a one piece deal. You can't put this on of course until the crankcase halves are together. Um, this is one of the, uh, I've got all of the other peripheral nuts secured and tightened. Um, and then this one I kind of do when I do my accessory section cleanup but this is a uh, I guess the third place in the engine that uses safety wire so this is a castellated nut behind the cam gear and it's just a real devil to get to now if you're removing and taking an engine apart there it is there behind the cam gear so it's uh, sorry for the out of, fo out of focus but it's uh, behind the cam gear and here's the special wrench you use, you use a uh, cylinder wrench now, if you have a brand new set of cylinder wrenches, you may have to polish and grind on your cylinder wrench to get in there. Um, this is actually the second set of wrenches I've had. My first set ended up cracking. Why did it crack? Because through some of the years, you've had to polish some of the areas to get them to fit just right on a Lycoming or Continental cylinder and or do things like this. Now, the thing I'm making sure I do here is uh, I'm tightening it, but I have to do it basically one. Um, it's a 12 point, it's a 12 point uh, socket or, or a wrench on this thing. I've got to do it one point at a time. 
because I will otherwise foul into the crankcase on either side of the swing. So I'm just moving it a little bit at a time. And uh, I got it down there kind of by hand, but then I'm gonna pull it off and move it over one notch and then do it again. And I'm doing it with the torque wrench to make sure that I, uh, I don't bottom out on any of that. And so, again, some of this stuff is, it's kind of persnickety and then you have to tighten it, but not so much that you get it a little too far and then the, the wrench won't bottom out. So you've got to just take your time in this one and slow go it uh, and then make sure that uh, you've got true torque on it. <laughs> you can see here you can't can't do it too too much and you just got to take it off just a little bit so it's just it's just frustrating you got to move it about a millimeter over and then it'll uh, stuff will come off and you'll be able to reset it so this one takes a little time no big deal um, just uh, slow go it and then as I said I'm just kind of making sure that I've got my torque uh, my true torque and I'm not clunking into the casting of the crankcase so real important there when we get done with this um, this doesn't get a cotter key there is a boss in the uh, in that area of the crankcase a drilled boss and this will get uh, safety wire this is probably one of the more frustrating fasteners on the engine So take your time, go in your happy place, just slow do it. Now taking it off, um, you may have kind of the, uh, when you're disassembling engine, you may have a little bit of the same frustration in that there's going to be um, residual product, shellac, varnish, whatever you want to call it on the inside of the engine. So the hardware may not come off that easy. You're just going to have to slowly get it off. But most importantly, that crankcase will not come apart unless you take that nut out and the crankcase is not officially together unless you have that nut on. So that's what we're doing here. And I'm kind of leaving this one in full time because you understand that it's, it's a thing. So there we are, we finally have our torque, I believe, and we're going to double check it. And what is this? Now we get into the also, we get into the we started with our bottom torque, and we've got to now get our castellation lined up. So we're, we've, uh, that's why I'm using the beam wrench, is I've started with a uh, bottom torque seeing where my castellation is and then bring it up now if it's it doesn't quite line up for you then you may have to change washers or uh, do some work on it as, as far as lapping a washer or something like that to get your castellation right but most of the time it'll come in and that's what I'm looking at there the nice thing is when you're putting safety wire through a cotter hole it's normally quite a bit more forgiving a little more real estate there for the safety wire to go through than say a cotter pin so it's normally pretty good and then there got to fish it down in this little hole bring it out pull it out twist twist as I said safety wiring is a uh, I wouldn't say it's an art I would say it's a craft but um, the more you do the better you'll get at it and it is a bit of a signature of your work so if you want to show folks that you're a crap mechanic well then do a crap job but if uh, you're trying to do a good job then uh, if it looks like crap cut it off try it again do it better so it is going to be your signature and uh, I'm assuming that nobody's going to see this safety wire job for another 20 or 30 years probably so um, we're going to make sure we do it do a nice job of it Cut off the piece, walk it over the trash can. And then we're just going to turn the tail down and then move on to our next task. 
and it's still hot as heck out in the hangar. Okay, what I'm doing here is I'm taking some solvent, um, acetone, MEK type product, uh, making sure that that gasket face is completely oil free. We don't want any leaks. We want this engine to be as dry and tight as possible. I've already addressed the crankcase. Let's clean that up. I've got my gasket ready to go. Now what I like to do on gaskets, this is me, is uh, I'll put a light coating and number two Permatex on it. That's just what I do. Um, in addition to what the uh, manual calls out, but I found that the Permatex has a, uh, it's a pliable. Um, it's not too hard if you have to remove the case. It's really not too hard to get off. Uh, but it is kind of a flexible deal. It does very well. It doesn't get hard and crack and cause leaks. It uh, works out pretty well. So we're getting everything lubed up. There's the tachometer shaft. It's going to be going through a little lip seal up in that tower. We're going to bring it down. Now the thing we've got to do is there's got a couple things going on. There's two dowel pins that set the accessory case. And then we also have to, and you'll see me kind of fumbling with it, get the oil pump uh, drive cog lined up and I've uh, I kind of have it about set up that way but uh, don't quite have it all all exactly that way now I'm looking inside here to uh, get my crank shaft just perfectly aligned you can see as I did that boom the case just settles down there's no reason to force anything uh, no reason to get anything go crazy then uh, what I will do is give it a give it a little bit of a tap to make sure everything's down you'll see that here in a little bit but now we're just filling holes with uh, with bolts washers and all that there we are getting everything kind of tapped down um, the frustration, if there is a frustration with the light combing, is there's lots of different grip bolts on this thing. They're going forward, they're going backwards. Um, on the sump, you can see there's on the bottom of the accessory case, there's studs and nuts and washers. So it takes a little bit of time. Uh, get your hardware all laid out, kind of organized and all that. And that's kind of what we're doing there, getting everything kitted out, so to speak. So this is all the hardware that we had sent off and other episodes to get uh, replated or replaced so we're going through all that everything's getting lubricated and uh, installed with new washers and lock washers most importantly number one rule of aviation and probably everything machinery don't reuse lock washers throw them out and get new ones they're cheap um, and they should not be replaced whether they're the internal star external star or a split lock always put new lock washers on. Same with, with cotter keys. Never reuse a cotter key. Unless a bear is coming at you and you're in Alaska and you've got to get home or something. But other than that, do not reuse cotter keys. So I'm just kind of bringing everything down here. Um, snugging it down. The other thing I've been doing, you haven't been seeing it, but every time I do a torque, and I know it's a final torque, I will put torque seal on it. So you're gonna see me here uh, with a little tube, and what I'm doing there is when I do my, for a good final forever torque, um, I'll put the uh, torque seal on it. So you can see there's bolts going up, bolts going down. Just kind of, uh, this is kind of an old school way of doing it. Unfortunately, a lot of the modern engines are derivatives of the older engines, so uh, you still have a lot of that. If you're to do a new engine from scratch, the design philosophies be completely different. That's something the military came up with in the uh, 1960s and 70s, and that was a science actually called maintainability, where they said, you know, this is taking a lot of time to do this, and you'll actually see where the modern engines and all of that uh, aircraft are much better designed with regards to that so uh, kind of neat to see but this is uh, yeah it's got a little bit of antiquity in it so um, you know this engine being an 0360 
And it's got a little 0320 in it, a little 0290, a little 0235. It might have a little bit of 65 horse 0145 in its uh, in some of its design attributes. So kind of kind of interesting to see how the equipment has evolved through the years. And what I'm doing there is kind of walking around. I had a little squeeze out of some of the uh, sealant, so make sure that that's all cleaned up. Looks nice and pretty. And we'll uh, we'll even check that out the next day, see if there's any additional squeeze out. But normally it's not a whole lot, just a, just enough to uh, know that you have put some sealant on there. So now we have the uh, torque seal. The stuff I'm using is actually a white. I've got my torque wrench. Got it set up per the book, and then uh, what I'm doing is I'm, I brought everything up kind of to, to snug, and now boom, torque it, and then I mark it. So that's that's forever. Don't need to come back on that. And then just going around, and uh, no specific pattern on this. Just kind of in a uh, coming around the horn, so to speak. Start in the middle, top, and then that's the again just the way I do it. Start in the top and then come around and bring it all down to one side. And the torque seal is keeping me honest, knowing that anything I torqued, uh, there's a witness that uh, I did that. Um, so I, I kind of, I kind of like, uh, I kind of like to use this stuff. You can get all different colors. You can go white, orange. I typically use a uh, white or orange when I'm uh, working on stuff. same thing all the way around the horn on the other side. There I had to kind of skip a little bit because we have those two bolts going up. So you got to retool and then uh, do the same thing on the other two. No real, if you want to call those hidden, those are the only hidden ones on the accessory cases. They're going the other way so no real big sweat on keeping those identified seal done done check 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 everything looks good okay move the engine around for the camera and if you notice my other camera I don't have my other camera because it got hot and cooked off not impressed and I'm just spritzing some uh, LPS in there on top of the oil just to making sure that everything has slobbered and wet and all that because I'm not going to see inside of here for a very long time. I've got a brand new razor blade and what I'm doing there is I'm cutting that gasket. That gasket is sitting proud of the uh, bottom of the in the trash can. I'll walk it over. It's sitting proud of the by about a quarter of an inch or uh, I don't know, about five millimeters of the, uh, yeah, I wonder why my camera crooked. Um, anyway, it's sticking out a bit. It's made oversized on purpose. So I'm cutting that off. And then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that that parting surface is all nice and clean. Uh, one more time because we're putting the gasket on that. Oh, that's the uh, oil pump pickup right there, that hole up at the very top. And what that does, that mates up with the oil sump. You can see that there, and it's got a casting passage that goes down for the oil pickup. This is a rear carbureted engine, 0360 A4K. There we are double checking, the, uh, making sure everything's nice and clean. Some of the Lycoming variants will actually have a dedicated pickup tube, and that passage will actually have a plug in it. So we were a bit on that on an engine here a while ago. That uh, that plug was actually missing when we brought the engine in, and uh, we missed it uh, putting it back together. We had to go actually go track one down. Now there's I put a little extra dab of sealant on the uh, three split lines, the accessory case, the two on the accessory case, and then one on the crank case, and that's just a little extra insurance that we don't have any leakage out of that area so just a little just a real thin layer 
This is not buttered up crazy, it's just enough to basically make it stick down. And it also helps out when you're assembling things because it keeps the gasket in place while you're installing things. So I'm just double checking everything, making sure everything's clean. Not camera friendly, my apologies. And what I'm doing is putting a washer, a lock washer, and a nut on to uh, hold the sump on so it doesn't fall on the floor. And then after that, it's uh, just adding a whole ton of hardware. And this has nuts on studs. It has uh, nuts on studs going down, nuts on studs going up. It has uh, bolts going uh, up, bolts going down. It's just kind of a... Uh, it's a real treat. So that's what we've got putting the uh, putting the crankcase together. Pardon me, adding the sump to the engine. So if there's anything frustrating about putting a Lycoming four cylinder, six cylinder together, I would say it's probably the sump because it just takes a lot of time to figure out all your hardware. Good thing. Take pictures of all that stuff when you're taking it apart and it will help you putting it all back together. The Lycoming manuals are quite good now, however, they're, they're not absolutely perfect, so something to think about. Okay folks, that's about it for this one. Um, the Accessory case is all bolted down, torqued down, uh, all final, final. We've got the sump on. I've got to deal with all the various sizes of bolts and all that. So nothing really going on here. But um, we've got it pretty well closed up. I've got to go through this, get all the hardware knocked out, and then torqued up and all that. So this is just pain. It's typical like combing sump. It's a whole kaleidoscope of... Uh, Hardware nuts, bolt washers, and all that. It's just hold over from the 1950s, I guess. Anyway, that's it for this episode. Next episode, we're going to put in the uh, inner cylinder baffles. We'll do the intake pipes. We'll be putting the uh, push rods in, rocker arms in, uh, setting dry clearance on this, making sure that's good. Um, what else? We might be putting some accessory bobs on. That's about it. But right now, it's uh, we're getting pretty close to the end, so this is kind of cool. So I sure do appreciate you guys hanging in there um my other camera my detail camera here gopro 7 it's about 95 degrees in the shop something like that it just croaked on me so i don't know what the deal is we got full of battery gopro so anyway that's it for this end or for this episode please like share subscribe notify and all that good stuff and we'll see you next episode this is bill i'm out